Hey team, and welcome to another video in the Astrological Magical Elections video series. Today we're going to talk about magical elections that are going to be available to us between um, the Aquarius full moon on August 4th until the Leo new moon on August 18th. So our typical two-week period, this time we are in a waning moon phase. Um, and I will probably not be joined by any cats tonight because we just had a rainstorm and the cats that tend to be more camera friendly are actually in fact big scaredy babies and are hiding under the couch as we speak. So our thoughts and prayers go out to those kitty cats hiding out under the couch, and they may get brave and sneak out and join us out here in a little bit, but we'll see. Um, so for today, we have three magical electional opportunities during this two-week period, um, and they're kind of all one right after another. Uh, so the uh, North American continent will actually get all three, Australia will only get one, and Western Europe will have two of them. Before we really dive into our electional charts, I did want to make a quick note that from early to mid-August in different parts of the world actually experienced the heliacal rise of the fixed star Sirius. And heliacal rises are kind of big deals within the life cycle of stars. They represent sort of the rebirth period of the stars. And the day, like the actual morning, the actual sunrise time of that heliacal rise date can be used to make a really potent stellar talismans. So it changes depending on your degree of longitude for your location. So I'm going to include a link to a site below that will tell you sort of the approximate date for when that starts. Uh, it starts around like August 2nd, um, well into like August 18th for those in the very high northly latitudes. So go and check that out and see if maybe you can find time to pencil in a serious fixed star talisman for yourself. Keep in mind that this talisman will need to be made at like during sunrise or in the moments kind of leading up to sunrise to really capture that heliacal rise energy as best as you can. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to our elections. And our first electional opportunity we're going to have is going to be for August 7th, somewhere around 1030 at night. And this is going to be for a first Lunar Mansion talisman. So the first Lunar Mansion typically is going to be utilized during a waxing moon phase for increase of energy, motivation, those kinds of things. Uh, but when we're doing the waning moon phase with the first Lunar Mansion, it can actually help for those of us who have kind of spread ourselves out too thin, made too many commitments, or are just kind of like struggling to kind of hold on or like keep grip of everything that's going on around us. A waning first Lunar Mansion talisman can actually be really good for individuals who kind of struggle with general anxiety disorders or kind of like intermittent or episodic uh, panic attacks. Um, just because they help you kind of like pare down and prune out all of those things rushing at you that you actually don't need to really worry about. So this can be really great for, you know, like I said, if you've made too many commitments and kind of spreading yourself out too thin and help you kind of see and understand what things that you can kind of start to say no to. So taking a look at our election really quickly, we have the moon here um, in the first lunar mansion conjoined the ascendant, you know, like we always want. Um, and at this time, the moon is actually applying a trine to the sun in Leo. And the sun in Leo, um, and you know, really just the sun in general, is really great when it comes to decision-making processes. Because what the sun's primary function is, the sun's basic nature, is to select. You know, the sun shines a spotlight on things and selects the things that we need to pay attention to. So having this kind of sun energy woven into a first lunar mansion talisman helps us, you know, have the clarity to see and understand things that are going on around us and helps us better make those decisions um, to, about what we do and don't want to spend our attention on. Because not everything, you know, is worthy of our attention, even though we might feel pressured by, you know, this, that, or the other thing to continually um, accept or want to do things or say yes or agree to things that may not really be in our best interest for one reason or another. Because we have Aries on the Ascendant, our ruler of the first house is Mars here, very well placed in Aries. And kind of one thing that you need to watch out for when it comes to having Mars as ruler of the first house, and you know one reason why we're not going to be able to really do it um, for very much longer at all is because Mars is getting kind of close-ish to the square, to perfecting the square with Saturn. So, you know, we kind of want to keep it away as much as we can. Here we're about six degrees, which is kind of like at the baseline or like the borderline of what we really want to get involved with. Um, so, you know, just kind of be aware of that. That's happening there in the background. Um, but we're kind of, we're still kind of far enough to where it isn't a huge major influence. But, you know, as it's starting to kind of get closer, we're going to, you know, see less and less of Mars being utilized or emphasized in sort of any sort of, act, uh, in any sort of electional chart. Unfortunately, this is the electional chart that there is not an equivalent for for Western Europe. So Western Europe has to miss out on the first mansion. And the reason for that is with the moon on the ascendant, like it was in the North American chart, we'll actually have the moon applying a trine to Mercury still. And I like that sort of energy a lot less than I did with the North American chart with the moon applying the trine to the sun. That's much better for selection and, you know, making the right choices. Mercury is a bit more frantic with its energy and not exactly what I would, you know, call upon to help me calm down, right? Um, so with that in mind, 
if we moved the chart to make it, you know, at the other time that would generally be acceptable with the moon on the midheaven, um, you know, we have that here. We have to deal with the Saturn opposite the ascendant, which I'm not willing to really accept. So that's why um, Western Europe does not have a first lunar mansion equivalent. Australia, however, does have an opportunity for this mansion. So, you know, welcome to the game, Australia, after, you know, several weeks of not really having anything to do. Here you go. Um, and here we have the moon, you know, back in the first uh, mansion, back in the ascendant. And she's far enough along to where she's still applying the trine with the sun like she was with the North American version. So it's a very similar situation here. You know, Mars is still the rule of the first house. And it's not bad that the moon is applying, is, you know, kind of close to the conjunction of Mars in this instance. Because Mars rules the first house, that's not a terrible thing. Um, and we're still kind of keeping an eye on this Mars-Saturn square. Yeah. So like I said, you know, just very similar to the North American chart. And it's actually kind of rare when Australia has a chart that is, you know, very similar in its setup to North America just because the moon positions tend to be very different. So, you know, good job, Australia. You really knocked it out of the park this time. And, you know, dust off those altars because I know it's been a minute and don't get rusty. Our second electional opportunity, this time we're back at North America, is for August 8th at around 11 o'clock p.m. Um, and here we're focused on a second lunar mansion talisman. And the second lunar mansion in this uh, context, in like a more waning moon context, is utilized for the removal of anger. So this is a talisman that you're going to utilize to, you know, remove anger. It's going to be a talisman that you'll use to help smooth over relationships, you know, to help people forgive each other and understand each other after having a fight. It can be really great for relationship repairs. It can be really great for seeking and giving forgiveness. You know, if you're struggling to forgive another person or you would like another person to forgive you, it'd be really great for those things. Um, it can also be used a little bit more preemptively uh, to, you know, keep yourself out of situations to where other people might be upset with you, usually by encouraging them to kind of empathize with you um, or, you know, to help you empathize with others if you're in kind of like a higher stress, you know, relationship situation. So I really recommend this talisman for these kinds of things just to help kind of like facilitate understanding and just to keep people from, you know, reacting to things kind of like very knee jerky or, you know, just to help them kind of like cool down or, you know, cool off and to keep people from having those very hot headed reactions to, to situations, you know, helping to facilitate communication and understanding, which is something that we could all really utilize. Now, this talisman is probably not going to help you out if you're like deliberately an asshole to somebody. Um, you know, it's not like a get out of jail free card for terrible interpersonal skills and, you know, like, like literally antagonizing other people and things like that. But as long as your heart's in the wrong place, it will help you, you know, from being misunderstood by other people. So here our election is actually very simple, and it's just the moon in the second lunar mansion, you know, conjoined the ascendant, applying the conjunction with Mars in Aries. And I know it probably sounds a little weird for a talisman that is about relationships, you know, understanding and, you know, removing anger and, you know, helping to facilitate forgiveness to really focus on Mars. You know, he doesn't really like either of those things, but Mars is a planet that represents anger. So, you know, using or turning to Mars to help remove anger and to kind of supplicate him to, you know, reduce the inflammatory responses in yourself and other people is really on brand for Mars. You know, Mars can give what he signifies, he can increase and intensify it, and he can, you know, remove and diminish it. So, you know, keep that in mind when working with planetary spirits in general. You can approach and petition planetary spirits almost by sympathy to help to increase or get more of whatever they signify or whatever they do naturally, uh, or you can approach them almost in like an antipathetical mindset to help them kind of reduce or diminish or pull back on some of the things that they signify that you, you know, aren't typically like really down with or really want any more of. Western Europe has an equivalent for this chart. So, you know, welcome to the game, Western Europe. And here it's formatted a little bit differently, whereas the North American version had, you know, the Moon-Mars conjunction on the Ascendant. Here we have the Moon-Mars conjunction on the Midheaven, which is absolutely fine as long as the Moon is in the second mansion and angular and applying to the planet that we want her to be applying to. And you have to be really careful with this chart uh, because the moon is actually very close to the square uh, of Jupiter. So make sure that she is separated from that. But as long as that is the case, um, you'll be doing kind of the same thing, focused on the moon-Mars conjunction. Of course, um, whereas in the North American chart, we had Mars ruling the ascendant, so we didn't have to worry about another planet. Here we have Leo on the ascendant, which points us to the sun. And having the sun in the first house is totally fine. Um, and the sun is unafflicted by, you know, either Saturn or Mars, who he's in trying to. So this is still a really solid chart. And it's for um, August 9th at around 6 o'clock in the morning. And look, my brave boy came out. 
Unfortunately, Australia will not have an opportunity for this election. As you can see their chart here for this time period, um, they'll have, you know, they can have the moon on the midheaven, um, but at this time the moon is actually applying um, the sex, uh, sorry, the trine to the sun, which is not what we want uh, because then we'll have the moon within orb of Mars, which is kind of being a malefic planet here, and we don't want that involved. At the same time, we have the nodes across the ascendant descendant axis, which I'm a little bit less comfortable with in this kind of a situation. So we've got the nodes across the ascendant descendant axis, and we have the moon applying to the wrong planet. Um, but there's still a bit of space between Mars and the moon here. So what we could try to do is move it forward and get the moon and Mars on the ascendant kind of maybe that night. Uh, but as you can see for that to happen, um, the moon and Mars are now separating from one another, which isn't good. And the moon is actually now applying a square to Saturn in, uh, in Capricorn, which is a no-go. So, you know, for those reasons, unfortunately, Australia will not have a second lunar mansion opportunity at this time. So our final election opportunity for this two-week period is going to be for August 9th at around 11.30 p.m. I told you they're like one after another. And here we're focused on a third lunar mansion talisman. This is, of course, back to North America. And so, you know, typically the third lunar mansion, this is, you know, the talisman for the acquisition of all good things. One that I recommend very highly, my first ever um, astrological talisman attempt. Um, uh, this is one that I typically recommend being done during a waxing moon phase because that is what she is most conducive to. Like that's going to help you get the most bang out of your buck. But I liked um, some of the way I like the way that this chart was configured to be able to offer it even during a waning moon phase. So this is going to be a talisman that's not at its most ideal. Um, you know, you're probably not going to get as good of an outcome of it as you would when the moon was waxing here just because the energies are a little bit off but you know if you you know need something now or you want to you know test something out on maybe like a smaller scale um this can still be a very solid election to utilize just you know you're not going to get it kind of at its full power so just kind of keep that in mind uh, but the reason why i liked it so much is because you know you have the moon uh, in here and the third lunar mansion conjoined the ascendant and she is applying a sextile to Venus with whom uh, she enjoys a mutual reception. So, so we have the moon in Taurus, which is Venus's sign, and then we have Venus in Cancer, the moon sign, and they are in an aspect with one another, and this is just a perfect example of a mutual reception. So, you know, that's very nice. Uh, not only that, but Venus rules the, the first house here, and Venus is, well, is, you know, not afflicted really. And, you know, the moon applying to Venus, a benefic planet who typically wants to provide, you know, good things is very in line with what she's capable of producing. So, you know, all in all, the framework of it, aside from the moon phase, is very solid. So definitely consider making this talisman. Just keep in mind that it's not, you know, the ideal framework. And, you know, that's not something that's unusual for us as astrologers to deal with. You know, the planets are where they are, and there's really not a whole lot we can do with it other than make the best of it that we can. Now, unfortunately, um, Australia will not have an, uh, an opportunity for this talisman because by the time the moon gets to that angle, she's actually separated from Venus. She's past Venus's degree and will be applying um, the square to Mercury. That's the next aspect. Um, and, you know, that's not ideal. We don't really want that. Mercury's not very good at, you know, bringing together good things and just kind of ruins the positive side of the election that I liked. Hello. Come here. Please come here. Uh. Yes, yes, I'm a baby. Yes. And see, I've manifested a cat to cuddle. So obviously, this is a great election, and you should definitely utilize it because look what I got. This is definitely a good thing. So while Australia has to miss out on the third lunar mansion talisman, Western Europe actually does have an opportunity for it. Um, here, pictured on the screen. Uh, we have the moon on the midheaven within the third lunar mansion, and she's still applying the sextile very, very closely to Venus in Cancer. So we still have that. Of course, the moon is still waning. Um, and we have Leo rising with the sun in Leo in the first house, and the sun is unafflicted by Mars or Saturn. So a perfectly fine um, third lunar mansion talisman other than the fact that the moon is waning. So like I said, not as ideal, probably not as potent, but you know, you sh you'll be able to get something good out of it. So, all right, those were all the electional opportunities that I have to share with you guys for this two week period. You know, three is not bad, especially for a waning moon. Um, you know, definitely not as busy as we were last time. Also keep in mind about the Sirius Heliacal Rising and check out that link in the description below to find out when or what date that uh, Sirius will be rising in your location and remember to get up early and finish that talisman uh, as the sun rises. That's really important uh, timing wise. So, you know, everybody take care and I will see you guys on the Leo New Moon and Lisa's bye.